I've decided I think I'll do a video how to on how to do the dual boot Android. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do this. I've never actually done one before. But See, I've got a totally clean memory card, 7 gig available. Totally clean, 8 gig class 6 card. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of space left on me in there, but I know. But hopefully, I'm just going to show you how to do the proper full install. Get rid of all that. Now, first thing you're going to need. The links are all in the side, all in the description for this video. The various things and pages you need access. But the first thing you need to do is partition the card. So I'm just gonna take my memory, my memory card out of my phone. If you just bear with me, ten seconds. So there we have my memory card. Plastics. It's the fastest micro SD card you can buy at the moment. And why my demos of Android are pretty nippy. I'll just plug it in my memory card reader. It's some generic micro US micro SD card reader I've got. Don't know where I actually got it from, but plug it into my computer, which I've got sat down here. Just down there. And then if I can get a decent recording on the screen. Yeah, you can see where I've been reverting my phone, my phone back to its standard state, so I can do this. This may go totally fucked up, but I don't know. Now all you have to do is enter that. I'll show you. Usually the last line after plugging your card in. I'll show you what device it is. In this case it's detected it's SDB. 8166 megabytes, it's an 8 gig card. So then you simply run This is possible to be done on Windows, but it's far more complicated to actually set up a Linux partition on Windows. So your best bet is to download some sort of Linux Live CD, Ubuntu, etc, etc. Anyone you basically want. GPod Ed Live is also a possible one you can use, and it's graphical. But as you say, if you want to use a console, that's what you do there. And it'll bring up a random thing like that. If you do, if I do P... You'll see that it shows one partition, which is Windows 85 FAT32. Shows the card as 8 gig. And then all you're going to write is the letter O. Which, if you press enter after that, comes up with a random error message, which you don't need to worry about. Press P again, you'll see there's nothing at all on the drive. You then press N, the letter N. Hit enter. It asks you if you want primary or extended, you want primary, press P, partition number 1, and then it asks you the first cylinder, you can usually just press enter, or type the number 1, and then press enter, it doesn't matter, usually it won't affect it either way, and then you set a SAT, you want to set the end, end package, or the end cylinder, in this case, I'm going to put for my 8 gig card. I don't want a very large partition for Linux. For Windows, I'll do 250M. So you simply type plus 250M. If you then press enter, it'll go straight back to that screen. And then you press T. I'm going to that. Shows you the selected partition, which is number 1. In this case, you want to enter the hex code of the letter C. And then press return. Selected partition has been changed to Win95 Win FAT32. Which is fine. It then shows that partition if you go to P. As SDB1. Which is that partition. If you then go new again. Press N. P. Press number 2. Enter. The first cylinder this time will already be set to the next cylinder. Just press enter or type the number that it says as default. And then enter your end cylinder, which is going to be just press and return again because you want it to use the rest of the remaining drive. And then if you do P again, it will show you that the drive is there 
and the partition type is Linux 83, which is what you want. You then write W and press return. It takes a little while to recache all the data, like so, syncing disks, so. And then if you do, then I would recommend you unplug and reconnect your USB card reader. Or your N900, depending on what you're using to read your card. The N900 can be used to do it through USB storage. I just wouldn't recommend it because if you screw something up and accidentally repartition your micro, your EMMC, you're going to kill the OS rather successfully. And I don't want to be responsible for people who come screaming at me because they've managed to screw up their operating system by messing around with things. So as I said, Android is not is getting to production production states, but it's not usable day to day. So I'll just unplug and reconnect my micro SD again. Just to let the operating system refresh what's there. I've got the DMSG again. It then shows the same drive. 8166. But with SDB 2. As it says, it's actually showing it above as well, but that's not the major. I always like to disconnect it and reconnect it just to be on the safe side. And then all you have to do is run these commands. First one will format the first partition, the second one on the second partition, obviously. That's virtually instantaneous because it's only a little tiny partition on my card. I should make you aware that dash G is a requirement because the kernels don't properly support ext2 so we need number three to do it and the m0 is not required but i always use it because you don't need anything reserved for the root user on android because there is no such thing as a root user the user is called system this takes obviously a little while back when it's finished. Right, as you can see the format's now finished. It seems to be done. So if I go to... I should make you aware that you don't actually have to touch the FAT32 partition you created. That is merely for one reason only. Memo will complain if it doesn't find one. It will say that the memory card is corrupt and try to format. Which you don't want. So you always create a little partition just to shut Memo. But next, we're going to mount the partition. So I'm going to go mount dev sdb2. In my case, it's slash mnt because that's the folder I'm on. I mean, development PC, as everybody who's been reading the forum will know, is very, very underpowered and takes hours to do anything. But it's virtually silent and I can leave it running 24 7. So it doesn't bother me in the slightest. But now I've just mounted that partition. If I go to view the disk you'll see the partition size is 7 gig. So now I've already got a spare root FS here that I can test with. I'll go to ls and just list the directories. It's over this way a bit. 0.0.3 iFi dual boot, which is the one I'm going to use. Purely because it's the new root FS, partially courtesy of ES, so I'm just going to start off the extraction in a moment. So extract the binary. We're going to extract this archive. The root FS will be uploaded on link to on the forum post moment uh, fairly soon after this video is put up. But the upload speed's crap, so I can't upload that quick. But here we go. Just going to go into the mounted folder. And then we're going to do the following command. And as you say, it'll scroll through a pile of junk as it sets up its own various.